This video will help you tactically move better at the net in doubles and mix. Izzy Kane's us because she was feeling lost at the net. Not sure what shots to prioritise or where to move to, making her much less effective at the net. So, welcome Izzy, thanks for coming down today. We'll just give everyone a little bit of background information. Um, you're a member of one of the performance centres in England, where I coach you between the ages of 12 and 17. Then naturally around that time, life's plans get in the way and obviously haven't played as much badminton since, but you've just started again now and you joined the club. Um, today we're going to focus around the net. What is it exactly that we're, we're working on? Um, I feel like I'm trying to cover everything at the net, but I'm not getting to everything. So I'd like to focus on those areas a bit better. So more prioritising the certain shots that can come over in different situations. Yeah. Great, let's have a look. So Dean, working on moving a bit more in and out of the net, maybe uncertain shots. How are we going to practice this? Um, so you're going to jump on court with Izzy today, and the idea is, is I'm only playing a shot into the mid court, okay. where you will then play a soft control shot into the middle on my side. And Izzy's job then is to feel like she's really pressing forwards onto the net and not allowing me to play a net shot that's going to take the attack away from you as a pair. So the idea of me playing a soft shot and her moving in, why, why should she be moving in there and not staying back? It's down to the shots that I have on offer. You know, if I'm kind of slightly below the tape, the chance of me being able to play a good flat shot become very slim. And also, that's your job to cover in the midcourt. So Izzy's role is to really make sure that she can cover that net shot and again, and not allow me to take the attack back. Okay, good. Rest there, Izzy. So, what I've noticed a little bit is when you're coming in, your racket still feels almost a little bit under the shuttle. So you've got to try and think about what that looks like imagery-wise to your opponent. So when you're pressing in nice and quick with your feet, we want to try and feel like you're early onto the shuttle that we're attacking. So rather than kind of leading with your racket coming under, I want you to try and really feel like you're keeping a much more attacking angle with the racket. So when you're making contact with the shuttle, that the shuttle feels like it's coming a lot steeper rather than feel like you're playing a net shot back to where your opponent's standing. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And speed wise, I still think you're very athletic. <laughs> I think it can move much faster coming okay. in. So as soon as you see that shot pass your eyes from David, feel like you really press in. Don't feel like you have to wait for me to hit. So okay, as soon as yeah. you see that soft, press forwards and nice and aggressive on the net. Go. Lucky. Right idea. Pressing out. Good. Go, go, go. That's better, is it? Off the net. Now press. Good. Off. Now go, 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 go. Oh. oh, sorry. Very good shot. Okay, so Izzy, much better set. Speed coming in a lot earlier in the shuttle. Do you see the difference? Yeah. Yeah. What was the main difference from your side? Well, I was faster and trying to attack like get on top of the shuttle to be able to attack it more as opposed to doing a net shot. And do you see the angle of your shot then was very different to when you were coming under a lot? Yeah, of definitely. Good. The one thing I just want to look at a little bit more in this set again is rather than feel like you're trying to hit it hard, still trying to feel like you're dipping it just behind where I am. And the reason being is sometimes because you're carrying a lot of speed of movement in, if you hit the shot too hard, you're playing to the person that's more on balance, that hasn't done too much. Your goal is to try and feel like you're playing it just behind me, the one that's just played the shot, because there's a lot more space in that area, rather than trying to hit off to the rear court. Okay. Okay, so yeah. nice, soft shots, small movements with the wrist. Good. Lucky. Faster in, come push, push, push. Better, that's good landing place, is it? Right into that space. Good. Better. Last feet, nice. Keep coming off the net first and then in. That's it, off the net now. Now press. Good. Good. Good, last one. Better, much better. How'd you find that? A lot better. Yeah, I think just in the way of, it's hard because sometimes obviously I'm just on my own. Yeah. You have to try and think about what my partner would be covering. So it's all about, using the space available as I've come in here and thinking I'm very much the player that you want to be out playing here, not the person that's a bit more ready behind yeah. me. 
So Dean, obviously looking here about when a, your opponent's slightly below the net and then the front court player pushing in, a lot from what I could see as well was just changing the racket position a bit. Can you explain a bit more? It, as, as you said, it's more about covering the possible shots that can come over. So what's happened a little bit with Izzy, even though I was below the net to start with, Izzy was kind of coming under the shuttle, but my shot has to come up. So it's just allowing Izzy to have a lot, much more positive angle. And as you can see towards the end, then Izzy's shot's a lot steeper, a lot more into space, making it much harder for us as a pair to retrieve that shot. And actually brought up probably one of the biggest mistakes we see a lot of players, is actually almost hitting too hard when they're there. Yeah. Because like you said, that back person is the person in control. The front court person's out of position and actually just trying to just almost a redirect. Exactly. The, the winner doesn't have to be a hard aggressive shot. And sometimes when we cover covering that speed of movement coming in, sometimes the racket wants to get involved with what our legs are doing. So it's really important we have this separation here that the legs are able to move quick, but we still have to have, be very relaxed in our upper body, relax in our grip, pressure, enable us to find the space rather than just instinctively thinking that we have to hit hard. And finally, speed of movement. And it's, that's very important for the front court person to understand what shot their rear court player is playing. And you can, you can feel, sort of, see the slide of the shuttle, you can hear the, on the strings, but you've also then got to move accordingly. Exactly. You know, once it's just in that shot come past you, it's just in it's a soft shot. Just also looking at my positioning on, on the other side of the court. And as soon as my racket comes down and I'm below tape, there's no reason for Izzy to still feel like she's looking off the net. We want to really make sure that we're not allowing our opponent to get away with a net shot below the tape and regain the initiative. So we've covered what happens when that rear court player plays soft. What exercise is next? So now we're going to look at when the mid court player hits a drive and how Izzy changes her position for that shot. Whereas obviously we spoke earlier about Izzy coming in if it's a soft shot. With the drive, Izzy's probably going to stay back a little bit more to look for the interception because I can now drive the shuttle because I mean, in, the, the shuttle is a little bit flatter. It's the next exercise is that I'm still going to play the first shot into midcourt, but rather than David playing a soft shot, he's going to hit a drive instead. So rather than you pressing forwards, you'll maintain the same position and try and look for the interception a little bit more. Okay. Lucky. Oops. Sorry, Izzy. Okay. Sorry, that wasn't very good. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. It's no problem. It's no problem. This is why you're here. Um, so, so obviously you found that difficult. Yeah. What was it you find difficult about it? Um, I guess knowing what kind of shot to hit. Okay and also how far across to move. Yeah. So in, in the way of it doesn't have to feel like it's too far across. It's if Davis, if you go into your position, Davis, if you hit the drive there, what you're trying to feel like you're covering is if that drive came quickly cross, that's going to be quite difficult for David to, to, to then cover. So it doesn't feel you have to move too far over, but it might mean that your racket sets a little bit more ready around the head because you know that you're prioritizing this side. Yeah. And you're right in the way of the shot. You could see that you weren't too short to hit because you hit almost a lot of stuff in between. So it yeah. wasn't too soft, it wasn't too hard, it was almost straight back. So obviously, obviously you hit a lot of shots kind of in the mid court. It's generally going straight to where our opponent's standing. So I think in this set, you've got two options. I want you to either be really dominant and try and feel like you're hitting hard towards the back of the court, nice high pressure, or try and feel like you're trying to lay the shuttle off a little bit more in front of the service line. So then both options, it's hard for them to get it back with the pace of shot, or you may be making a move really far in using the space available at the front. Okay. Okay. Better. Like it. Not too far, not too far, sorry. Just one step. Doesn't have to feel like you're running away to the back of the court. Yeah. It's more an interception to cover that side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Lucky. So this set is you really trying to feel like you're holding your ground where you are now, no kind of further back. Okay. Okay. So, hold. Good. Unlucky. So, a little bit close, that's it, stay there. <laughs> nice, better, better. Better. Unlucky, unlucky, much better set, much better set. Good, so the main difference for me there, much shorter, sharper, 
contact point generally much better. I mean, the other sets obviously had a lot more that's gone past you. I think, again, that's because of the swing. That time, again, trying to go a little bit shorter, sharper from here, just enables you to get that contact point more where you want it, rather than having to try and get the racket all the way back and all the way forward. Do you feel a difference? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good. The only thing now I think we could possibly look at in this last set is still racket position. So when David comes out to his forehand side and you're covering the round the head, I still think that your racket starts a little bit more on this side. That's when it comes past you, you're having to move across. So I want you to feel like once that shot has gone past you and David's in this side and you're covering the round the head, try and prep with this racket already this side of your body to make it a lot easier. You've got a lot less to okay. do. And the same the other way. If David comes on his backhand side and you're coming here, you can really feel like that racket weights a little bit more in position on the cross. Round the head. So still prep that racket around the head. Good. Sorry. Tough. Last one. So Dean, we looked there at what Izzy should do if the rear court player myself hit to drive and saw some massive improvements there, particularly sort of with feet position and racket position. Yeah, so towards the start, Izzy kind of maybe felt that she didn't have enough time and, and wanted to almost drift backwards a little bit more. So just you know, the defender's shots and traveling further, gives them more time to react. And also Izzy doesn't have the same presence as a net player because she almost going the wrong way. It's just trying to get us to hold her ground a little bit more and, and use that. And I think the general gist so far with both exercises is you've got to prioritise the potential shots your opponent can play and, and the most likely ones. So with the soft, it's actually the push to the net. Yeah. And with the hard one there, actually that drive coming back off is the one we want to look at. Exactly. And we don't want it easy to run forward either. We're obviously shot busy running back. We don't want it easy to run forward either because you have to have this middle ground of having reaction time enough to see the shot but still provide presence in your own yeah. shot. And what we're trying to do is just hold your ground a little bit more. But I think a lot of that came from technique, as we said, David. So Izzy's start was using a lot of arm. So that's why she probably felt that she had to go backwards because the prep for using your arm is much longer. Actually, Izzy needed that time. Whereas towards the end, because we we're trying to get Izzy to use her forearm, her wrist, a lot shorter action, Izzy felt that she could hold the ground a little bit more and still be able to execute the type of shot that she wanted to hit. So Dean, we've looked at what happens when I play a layoff and what does Izzy do if I play a drive. Now obviously bringing the whole thing together, what exercise are we going to do? So we're going to make it a lot more open now. So just a single shot of routine where I'll, I'll be still down the middle, but I can kind of play any shot. I can start to add lifts and many drives are like, but also just looking at the tactical situations about where Izzy's going to move to cover certain shots and also bring yourself in a little bit more within this routine. Yeah, I think the big thing here is how can we work as a pair tactically? Yeah. And it's very much that you're not working for yourself, yeah. we're working as a pair. That's a good point, David, about sometimes the mid-court player, rear-court player, always wanting to play shots where the shuttle comes back to them. And that's not necessarily the case of what we're looking for here. It's sometimes always about setting up the net player so they're able to be a lot more dominant from the front because the shuttle has to travel less distance. Definitely. Good, good. Same as that lift goes up, just come off the net a little bit, that's it. Now go. Oh. Lucky, lucky. It's like a skip in the air. Back it up, lucky. That's the one, I do it like that. But I think that one is also because you've gone for the first one, it's hard, it was hard for you to feel like you were quick enough coming back. Just being aware of where the racket sitting the whole time. Sometimes on that recovery, because you're worried about, I need to cover the space. You thought about the legs, but the racket the racket's down. Dro dropped a little bit, not okay. too low, but just around here. I like it. That's a good situation for us to talk about because what's happened there is Dave's hit a good smash and you've intercepted this drive down the line, which is great. But as David's seen you come across, David's naturally going to cover the space on the cross. Okay. So you don't have to feel like you have to rush back across and intercept that as well. Yeah. Okay, so you could hold the straight there and make sure you cover the straight drive rather than feel like you're coming across the net too much. Okay, yeah. Because it just doesn't send a clear signal to your partner what you're covering. As soon as you come here, David knows you've got this side and here come up this side of the court for you. Yeah. Okay. Better. Good. Nice, good. Very good, much better. Off the net. 
Oh, what? <laughs> really good first rally because you were very clear about what you were covering at the net. Yeah. So great interception on the straight. I play cross. You didn't get tempted to try and overstretch and run across. And David was there covering because you made it so clear that you were covering this side. And again, when I then switched it back, you still stayed there. Much better working as a pair. Yeah. So we've got to keep thinking about what are you covering? What my, what's my partner going to cover? Sometimes you don't have to feel like you cover too much, like you said at the start. Yeah. As soon as you feel like you're covering everything, very difficult for David to know what he what you want him to cover. Yeah. Stay, stay. Good. Good. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Good. Out in the seat. Push. Better. Yeah. Nice. So much better. <laughs> wow. Great rally. Great rally. So in that final exercise really sort of brought up the importance of working as a pair. And I think you brought it up in the session is that when Izzy pulls across, it allows me to kind of make a move and cover the cross. And I think it's important to understand that that front court player is the person who dictates where we go essentially, because as the rear court player, I can see everything. So I can see what she does and move accordingly. Whereas if I'm the one trying to make a move, she can't see what I'm doing. And that's why it was really important when we're talking to Izzy about being confident that she makes clear decisions because that helps you very much from behind and sometimes what we see other players or club players is that a lady wants to go to the middle or men's doubles a man wants to go back to the middle and it doesn't make things clear for the rear court player what it is that we're actually covering so we talked a lot to Izzy about coming back off the net coming into the net when to cover a side and it's just making sure that we reflect that based on the shots that are coming over and the best thing to do is if you're not sure just commit to something. So easy, well done on a great session. How did you find it? Yeah, really good. Um, obviously at the beginning I was struggling with where to be at the net and um, now I feel like my positioning is a lot clearer. I know what I need to intercept as well. Um, so easy, what we found during the session is that you became a lot more confident. I think part of that was that you were able to pick a side and you knew exactly what you should be covering and where you should be moving to. And just to recap what we went over, and this can be for both doubles and mixed, we looked at what you should be doing movement-wise, dependent on the shot your partner's played or even the shot that your opponent's played. We looked at racket position, where that has to be, dependent on the side. And then just being confident in the shots you play, kind of committing to it and not playing these in-between shots that actually do nothing. And as always, if you like this content, please hit the like and subscribe button and head over to our Instagram and give us a follow.